Thank you for letting me address you at this conference gone virtual due to the COVID-19 situation. My name is Henrik Engel Rode. I'm chief judge at the court on Bornholm, one of 24 courts of first instance in Denmark. My court's jurisdiction is an island in the Baltic Sea, quite remote from the rest of Denmark. My presentation will not address present COVID-19 issues and challenges in courts, but the general use of video conferencing in regards of witnesses appearing before a court. Most modern court buildings are designed so that defendants, witnesses, injured parties and others can be separated from each other when arriving at the court building and while waiting in the court building. But everyone must appear before the court in the same courtroom. The defendant is confronted with the witnesses and vice versa, since the defendant has a fundamental right to hear the statements against him, whether the witness statements are given by an injured party or another witness. However, according to Danish procedural law, the court may decide to remove the defendant from the courtroom if the court sees a risk that a witness, the injured party for example, cannot be expected to give a full and credible statement before the court if the defendant is present in the courtroom. The situation is known as a vulnerable witness situation. Having the defendant removed from the courtroom does not however eliminate the defendant's fundamental right to become familiar with the statement Wherefore, the court, after the statement has been given, must make sure that the defendant's right is fulfilled. A take that often used to be quite time-consuming. The Danish procedural law also allows for, under certain circumstances, witnesses giving their statements by video conference from remote premises, usually from a courthouse in a different jurisdiction. In 2007, video conferencing was introduced in some Danish courthouses. And since 2014, each Danish court has video conferencing facilities in some of each court's courtrooms. The main reason for installing these facilities was a wish to be able to having defendants appear by video conference before the court at court hearings regarding extensions of custody. This in order to save money on having the defendants transported physically between the custody facility and the court. But the video conferencing technique soon showed its applicability in other types of hearings and situations, such as in the vulnerable witness situations. Given that the case is heard in a courtroom with video conferencing facilities, and the judge decides to remove the defendant from the courtroom while a vulnerable witness is giving his or her statement, the defendant is placed in a different room to which the witness statement is transmitted. It is the experience that this procedural take on the vulnerable uh, witness situation makes the process slightly easier for all parties involved. The witness is not confronted with the defendant in the courtroom, and yet the defendant's right to become familiar with the statement is handled with, in a less time-consuming way. In fact, before having access to video conferencing facilities, the defendant quite often protested against being removed from the courtroom, wherefore the judge had to formalize an order on the matter. Using the video conferencing facilities as described, the defendant hardly ever protests when being removed from the courtroom, since he can now follow the statement live. It's my experience that having access to the video conferencing facilities in the situation described, to some degree, uh, in a figurative sense, has disarmed judges' concerns on having the defendant removed from the courtroom when a vulnerable witness is to appear before the court. When it comes to having witnesses appearing uh, by video conference from a remote location, some legal, or should I say socio-legal, issues must be considered, among others the accuracy of the witness statement, 
compared to a face-to-face -face hearing. Is the witness less able to tell the story? Is the witness less likely to feel the seriousness of the process? And what is the location like where from the remote witness appear? The cues provided by co-location in a physical courtroom are largely absent in a video conferenced court appearing. A range of technical issues must also be considered with video enabled hearings, just to mention overloaded networks, inadequate bandwidth, low quality equipment, calls that drop out, and inaudible audio. Regarding the legal and social legal issues, the Danish take on these issues is always taking a concrete assessment of the case, the expected length of the witness statement, and the expected value of the statement. To cut a long story short, if the witness cannot be considered a so-called crown witness, and if the statement is not expected to be long, like more than half an hour or so, the court is likely to let the witness appear by video conferencing. Regarding the technical issues in Denmark, a witness appearing before court by video conference in a criminal lawsuit must always appear at a different courthouse so that the quality of both the high definition video and the audio is guaranteed. By appearing at a courthouse, though in a different location, also ensures that the witness is in a neutral place where it, can be, where it can be controlled that the witness is not under influence by others during the statement. This picture shows an example of a monitor set up in a remote witness room in a Danish court. The witness can see the judge and the other parties, and in this picture a presented document as well. The witness cannot see himself or herself, just as the witness could not see himself or herself if he or she had appeared in the courtroom. Having access to sufficient and well-functioning video conference facilities in courts is a cornerstone in providing a framework where witnesses, when needed, can feel safe not only in the separated areas outside the courtroom, but also in the courtroom. In addition to this, the access to well-functioning video conference facilities in courts also provides for witnesses to spend less transporting time to and from court if and when the judge allows the witness to appear from a location closer to the witness' home or work. In Danish courts of first instance, all statements, also statements from witnesses, are audio recorded. This ensures the credibility of what was said in court compared to a classic summary. This credibility sometimes leads to the defendant refraining from wanting the witness re-examined during an appeal. Credible witness statements are essential to justice, and the courts have a duty in facilitating a framework that ensures so, both regarding the interior design of the court and regarding technical facilities. A witness should feel both secure and relaxed when giving his or her statement in court, and a witness appearing in court should not be more time-consuming for the witness than needed. My 10 minutes are up, but I wish you a good conference.